in my experience, one of the most effective things to do to bring up a lagging body part is to train it more often, not necessarily with more volume even, just more often. I've even taken clients with the same volume and split it up. So instead of hitting their, let's say their biceps twice a week for a total of, let's say, I don't know, 16 sets to do it three days a week and do five sets or six sets on each workout. So same volume, just more frequently. I agree with that. The, the only challenge with that is managing the intensity aspect because I think that- Yeah, you can't train super hard. Because like I, th- yeah. I mean- I remember as a young kid, like that was the first way I started to attack the arms. I was like, okay, I'm going to train arms like every time I come in. But yeah. I was training it with this like crazy intensity every time. So I was constantly stuck in this recovery trap. Mm-hmm. Right? So you have to understand that I, I 100% agree that, you know, f- hitting it more frequently, three, four times a week is totally fine if it's a, it's a stubborn, lagging body part. Hitting it first. But, and hitting it first. But then you got to also understand that you can't hammer the shit out of it, you know, if you're doing it five days a week yeah. like that. Hey, real quick, we're going to get back to the discussion, but before we do, I'm going to give away one of our most popular bundles, the RGB bundle. This includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetics. So three programs for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all those things. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to that incredible bundle, the RGB bundle. Also, we're running a sale this month. We have a starter bundle, which is MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. That bundle is 50% off. We also put MAPS Split 50% off. That's a bodybuilder style workout program. So both of those half off. If you're interested, go to uh, mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code MAYSPECIAL for that 50% off discount. All right, here comes our show. Here's a simple tip that'll get you leaner, easier, eat protein first in your meal. So when you're looking at your plate, finish the protein portion, then move on to the rest. This makes actually a big difference. Such a good tip that I wish I figured out early on in my career. And it was, it's like such a simple way to get people, instead of uh, putting parameters around their diet, just like saying, Hey, just when you look at your plate, eat this first, and then just see what happens from that and finish that first. And you know what I realized that myself, I was just as guilty of this. And we we all, when we go to restaurants, when they restaurant, what do restaurants always come out for with? Yeah, bread or yeah, chips. Yeah, carbohydrates, or, all this stuff like yeah. that. And then, and we're all, I guarantee we've all done this before. You've been guilty of like, you go to a really nice like steak restaurant, right? You order your like real, you know, $50 steak or plus, right? Coming and you get all these appetizers and all these other things. And then you don't even finish this like $50 steak. And you're like, but you're thinking more of the money. You're like, oh my God, I can't believe that. But literally that happens a lot all the time with snacking on chips, bread, before you eat your protein meal, whether you made it or you're having well, it at a restaurant. Well, so we we were totally um, validated the other day. We interviewed a dietitian from NutriSense. And NutriSense is a company where they uh, it's a device that m- monitors your glucose. It's a continual glucose monitor. So we, we can see your glucose spikes in real-time real data from that. Real-time right? data. And I asked her, and this episode will get released uh, soon, but I asked her, I said, what's one of the most impactful things that you notice that, in, that will cause a positive impact on glucose? She goes, eat protein first. Mm-hmm. When you eat protein first, you don't get this crazy. Now, why would you want to avoid these spikes and drops? That leads to crashes and energy. It leads to cravings. It leads to irritability. Right. It leads to just behaviors that tend to make you want to overeat. Now, as trainers, I didn't. we didn't have access to these devices. I wish I did. I didn't have I just noticed... Then when my clients ate the protein first, they ate less. Mm-hmm. They just, and protein is very satiating. So they just nagged, without telling them to eat less calories, they ended up eating less calories because of it. And then also high protein diets build more muscle, which indirectly burns more body fat through the faster metabolism. And most people have a tough time hitting protein targets. Um, and so eating protein first just made sense and it worked and it worked well. And that's what it does. It leads to less eating, more stable glucose uh, readings. You just feel better. It's just an easy way to get to your goals. Well, there's so much you want to accomplish in that first interaction with a potential client and, you know, trying to uh, look into their diet, try to get, you know, a good insight and find things and, and ways to basically, um, you know, change their behaviors and what they're doing. And, and I'm always looking for these small hacks and these things that are very simple, very applicable, uh, especially for like if I'm in a conversation with my dad, for instance, which is always uh, you know, we'll interact and he's always looking for advice for things, especially nutritionally. And I'm like, mm. oh my God, what is he actually going to do? You know, that that's a major hurdle. Yeah. And to just say, hey, 
just try this, you know, just, just eat your protein first before anything else. And, and that's it. Yep. That's, I'm going to stop right there. Let that sort of play out how it's going to mm -hmm. play out. And you see the behavioral changes that result from that. That's a way better uh, approach. It's the psychology of it. You're not telling him he can't have the other stuff. Yeah. That's the, that's the power in all of this uh -huh. because it's amazing how what funny creatures we are. If you tell us we can't, how bad we want it after that. It's like rebel. Yeah. You may not even have liked the chips before dinner that, but that much, but your coach or trainer or whatever, or you tell yourself, I can't have those anymore. And Oh, it's so hard now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can't have, I can't have those chips. Now you're no. playing the devil on the shoulder, angel on the shoulder game. Yeah. It's like, Hey, no, you could still have those chips. All I want you to do is to make sure you eat the protein first. So eat your protein first. Then I encourage you to have your vegetables. And then if you still want to snack on those chips, then just that's fine. Yep. Just do it in that order for me. Now, physiologically speaking, right, proteins and fats are essential. That means that those macronutrients you have to eat because your body can't produce certain amino acids, which come from protein. Those are called essential amino acids. And certain fatty acids, which your body can't produce. Those are called essential fatty acids. So you have to eat proteins and fats. And carbohydrates are not essential. That doesn't mean it's not ideal, that it's ideal. But you could avoid carbs for the rest of your life, and you're not going to die from it like you would from avoiding proteins and fats. Eating protein first also gets you to eat your fats first, typically, because most protein sources come along with fats. So typically, most people, it's a, it's a meat. So you're getting those essential macronutrients out of the way, meaning most important, and then you move on to the next thing. But yeah, the behavioral part is the big reason why this made a big difference, because protein is satiating. It just is. Yeah. Carbohydrates are the least satiating uh, macronutrient. Protein is the most, fat is second. <clears throat> most of us does our, organize our meals, leave them, we leave the protein last. Simply switching it around makes a big difference. And then to hear the dietician say, it's one of the most effective ways to control these spikes in glucose was so validating. Because I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I've been communicating that forever. Yeah. And it's cool that you can see this on Tangible this device. data that backs it up. Yeah. She's like, if you just eat protein first and then go on to your other stuff, she's like, we see way less of a response. And you know, those, those spikes in glucose and then those drops, you get those cravings, you get those energy crashes, all the, all the things that lead to behaviors that make you overeat or eat foods that maybe aren't so beneficial. So simply just, you look at your dish and you go, okay, I'm supposed to have 30 grams of protein for every meal, eat that. And then move on to the next stuff. And then what you'll find is you just you just naturally you eat, as much eat less. You end up leaving some of the potatoes. You yep. end up leaving some of the chips versus the other way around. I know, you right? Eat the chips, the potatoes, and things first, and then you leave some of your meat, you know, the most valuable stuff that you could be consuming. It's on such your plate. a it's such a simple like it's like a, another one is like don't drink while you eat. And people are like, what's wrong with having fluid uh, yeah. in my stomach? And it's like, it's not, you know, I'm not being, I'm not Ayurvedic medicine guy. So I'm not trying to say like it balances out this because I know Ayurvedic medicine says that. Yeah. That's not the reason. It's because when you don't drink, you slow down. Yeah, you have to chew your food. Yeah, you, can't, you can't just wash you just it down. You take a huge bite and then just cram it down. Like I, it's, I've been guilty of plenty of times. Dude, it sounds silly, but I swear to God, these little things, they affect your, because we're behavior driven. It's not, just the mechanistic aspects. It's like, what gets my be? What can I do to to promote the types of behaviors that lead to the goals and the things that I want to accomplish? That's what I should focus on. Yeah. And eating protein first is just it's a simple, sounds silly, but try it out. You see for yourself, it actually makes a big difference. Really okay, so I have uh, I have a bunch of stuff that I wanted to talk to you. About. We probably won't get to all of it. I I want to start with my um, start with the protein. No, <laughs> the protein of the content first. Yeah, exactly. Okay, the so, essential stuff. So I'm going to call that the less controversial stuff. So okay. gonna, <laughs> yeah. this will be more more conspiratorial. So we'll go that direction. We'll go All that right. direction. Well, Justin loves it. No, I had this. On. I had a high moment last night, right? So I'm uh, <laughs> cleaning house, and uh, you know, this is these are my these these moments I have sometimes. And I've got the TV on. I'm watching playoffs and stuff, and this commercial comes up. I'm doing dishes. And I, I just had this moment, and I, I, when I had these moments, I wish I had you guys here so we could kind of have this dialogue. That's why I'm bringing it to the the podcast because I didn't have you guys there to have it. And it's like, is this me being high right now, or like, has anybody <laughs> else thought about this? Like, so I'll tell you if it's yeah, what okay, it is. okay. So tell, <laughs> tell me, me that. Let me know so, what you think. Yeah, I just I I find it really interesting that just a few years ago, like most people didn't know what cryptocurrency was, and there's still a, obviously a tremendous amount yeah. of skepticism around it, and like. Is it going to be adopted or is it going to replace cat? Like what, what, where is it going to end up? What is it going to be like? There's so much question still around it hmm. yet. I am bombarded 
with advertising around crypto more than anything else I've ever been bombarded with advertising. I mean, there has to be hundreds, not hundreds, maybe billions of dollars right now. I know for sure there's single companies spending hundreds of millions of advertising like crypto.com. Like, are you talking being retargeted on your phone from like the interactions you have online? Are you talking about on TV? Both. Like everything? I can't get away. I can't, ex I can't escape it from now, social media. Now, what are media? the ads? Are they like buy this coin? They're or everything. So it, like it's le less coin and more like uh, crypto.com. You see Coinbase. Uh, yeah. You see. Oh, that's what it's. It's these companies that uh, that do the trading. It's all or though. Store your yeah. Coin. What's the other uh, uh, Ethereum FT, or FT something? I forget. There's a, there's a handful of these like really popular. But yeah, that too. I mean everything. I, I I cannot. A day has not gone by where I haven't been hit on social. I haven't hit been hit on YouTube. I haven't been hit on TV with crypto conversation. And it makes me go like, are we just getting conditioned? Yeah. Like to accept this and this is where it's somebody's paying a lot of money for this. And like and how are you who's profiting off of all of that? Right. If it's still something that's kind of in this gray area and it's not fully accepted, like it's how, the it's gotta be the fees that these companies get from allowing you to buy and sell their coins or be on their right. Like that's how it my, has to be. My okay. brain goes, okay, if someone so I, I read an article that crypto.com uh, it has a campaign running right now of a hundred million dollars in commercials that they're they're for the next few months. Hundred million dollars in commercials. Wow. So, yeah. what's the ROI on that? It's got to be more than hundred million. Otherwise, well, it wouldn't. Right. Spend so, it. Yeah. so is that what it is? Is like they're just we're convincing people so much. There's so much money to be made in crypto right now that if we can just get them in our wallet, making transactions, and we're making our little fees off the transactions, we can get back that hundred million. Two x, three x. That's got to be that. What, <clears throat> what do you huh. think, Doug? I don't know. I think they're making a lot of dollars for selling crypto. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's what I think point. is hella funny. That's what I think is hilarious about all yeah, this. Yeah, that is funny and ironic at the same time. Right? Like, yeah. It's not like they're getting paid back. Let for me crypto. have your dollars so you can have Dude, crypto. Did you hear what Warren Buffett said about Bitcoin? No. He goes, Recently? I, yeah. I know he doesn't I know he doesn't mess with it. No, there was a quote. He said, I wouldn't buy all the Bitcoin in the world for twenty five bucks. Now if you told me you owned all of the Bitcoin in the world. And you offered it to me for twenty five dollars. I wouldn't take it because what would I do with it? Whoa! Yeah. And he goes, "It you can't do it. It doesn't do anything. He's like, it doesn't do anything. Doesn't do anything for you. You can't do anything with it. I wouldn't buy it for." So he's he's just basically saying it's a super speculative thing that. Yeah. Is Rick Ross just had a video that went viral like the other day. Really? Yeah, he's, he's always like been calling out all the all, all the people that like the crypto billionaires and stuff like that, talking shit. He's walking around his mansion, showing his ceiling off and stuff like that. And he's <laughs> like, yeah, he's like, "Where are you all at?" Yeah, it's all like in the visual or the the virtual world. Yeah, that's say, what he was like, talking shit. Yeah, basically, yeah. it's like Dude, you a bunch of like metaverse you this, billionaires, like, ridiculous mansion, like <laughs> all in your uh, yeah metaverse metaverse. Hey, speaking of commercials, didn't Amazon just get in trouble because what's this service? Uh, Alexa is Alexa with Amazon? Yeah, yeah. That Alexa's listening to you. Oh, I saw it's that. It's confirming what we already knew. Targeting like, you with ads. Oh, hundred percent. They've been doing. I guarantee for years they've been doing that. And just somebody now is like, oh, oh, look at this. Well, we talked about this a long time ago, and we and I talked. I, I made the case of like, ah, do I really care? You know, what I'm saying. So they're they're getting better at like they already know. I'm searching this. I'm talking about it. Well, so that's what like, you know. What you don't know. I see. That's the freaking tinfoil hat side of you. No, it's goes, not. Why? This is like because who the fuck are you that they're like actually collecting other information they really care about? Well, hold on. You're you're you know, let's the, say, most, the most the most okay to the people, people that are, are okay, the currency. to these people. Thank you. Your data is currency, dude. Thank you. So they'll Stop sell whatever habits foil. you have. Listen, no, no, it's not tin foil. They're literally selling your habits to other companies. Yes, that's sure. Okay, yeah, foil. yeah. It's all about getting your money. That's what it is. Yeah, well, that's or, what I'm saying. It's or like, or influencing your vote. Look, if Google is listening to you, and Google is influenced by said I don't know politician or whatever policy, they can say. Let's target this person with these articles, these ads, these keywords to continue to radicalize this person to push I'm not, them in I'm this direction. I'm not arguing what they can or can't do with that type of information. That's a lot of money and power okay. in that. That's well, I'm, what, I'm I, what I'm arguing is what I think they're really, what they really care about, what they're really doing, which is getting money from you, which is you be buying more so they can sell it to other people for advertising purposes and those things. And it's like, that to me is like, huh, whatever. Well, yeah, you, I don't, well, you see that too. And based on your interests, like how much better they've gotten with yeah. ads, like literally like, oh, I would buy that. I was like, wow, this is getting crazy. Yes. Yeah. I don't care about that. I care about what I just said, which I is know. well, that's because I, it's easy because it's effective. They can effectively target you with articles 
and through the process of these articles, they can radicalize you yeah. and push you in a particular direction or cause a lot of fear and get you to react and act in particular ways. And if they're listening to you or watching your habits, it's not hard. It's not hard for them to be like, oh, Adam, let's keep peppering him with these little articles about how everything that isn't mainstream is a conspiracy theory and they all wear tinfoil hats for didn't they, didn't they? Let's didn't just they, keep doing that, didn't right? They just did, didn't they just do a study on that, that like uh, the internet isn't uh, isn't feeding us biased information like we think it is? I just, oh, I wish oh, I would have. it's a YouTube algorithm. Yes. Well, yeah. did you see that article? I, saw, I didn't read it. Damn it. I, I wish I would have read it now because I just, it came in. I remember in, it though. Yeah, I do remember just getting hit in my feed like just recently. Maybe Doug I'm always can, skeptical. I'm the guy that's always <laughs> like, what's I mean, going on? Yeah, I mean, but they've already, like, that one organization, that marketing firm, like, uh, I mean, they busted them for literally trying to sway uh, people that were somewhat moderate and in the middle to, to, to tip them over to vote a specific Dude, way. Dude, listen, okay. It's been proven. Listen, after September 11th, we passed these, these bills that allowed for the widespread spying of uh, everyday Americans. So they could go through your emails. They could watch you. They could read you all under the pretense of this is for national security. Everybody's like, I got nothing to hide. I don't care. They're not going to do it unless they think they need to, whatever. Before you need a warrant to do this with this with these bills, they didn't need it. Well, you know what just came out? It just came out that they've been spying on billions and billions and billions of, of emails and text messages and, and electronic uh, communication between Americans. Regular Americans just came out that that's, they've definitely been collecting it and spying. Now, what's the danger of that? Well, let's say let's say Justin uh, writes a post and it goes viral, and all of a sudden he's very influential, and they're like, "Holy shit, we got to shut this guy down." Yeah. All they got to do now is, if they now want, they got past records. All they got is go through all his old shit yeah. that he's done, and it's, of course they're going to find something. All these, yeah, exactly. All of a sudden, this new information about so and so that they don't want to get, uh, you know, they're very vocal now against whatever like you know, uh, policy or something yeah. that's out there. And it's like, all of a sudden now you get this dirt, uh, that just appears. Dude, know, yeah. speaking of that, the Roe versus Wade thing got leaked. Oh, at the Supreme court. How crazy is that? Oh, that's scary, man. That's that, scary. That's really it makes who, Has that how happened? did that happen? How that's did it, that even no, get leaked? No, no. Full memos have never been leaked. So the Supreme court is supposed to be non-political. Now I know that sounds funny because whenever they get a new justice gets appointed, it's this huge, you know, deal or whatever, but they're elected for life specifically because the role of the Supreme Court is to defend liberty, is to defend the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, and often that's unpopular. And so what you don't want is you don't want justices who get elected every four years because then it's popular opinion. We know how bad politicians are with yeah. that kind of stuff. If the popular opinion goes this way, well, that's what we're going to do. And if Justices are supposed to be solid, Constitution. This is why it was designed that way, right? Not saying they're perfect, but that's the way it was designed. Leaking out a memo before a vote or anything else, opens the door for some scary stuff. Yeah. They could be intimidated. Like if you're a this juror- This has never happened before, right? If you're a juror on a big on a big case, you're kept anonymous for for a reason. Like if you're on a, like a, let's say you're on a, a case for the FBI is cracking down on organized crime and you're a juror, you don't want people to know who you are because if the mafia knows, oh, you're going to be one of the jurors, they could fuck with you sure. or the justice, <clears throat> intimidate you. And they have in the past when they found out, right? The leaks like this are not supposed to happen. Now, of course, it conveniently, conveniently happened before midterms. So we know that this is obviously po people politically don't driven. People see and can read between yeah. the lines of that. It's it's pretty sad to me. Yeah. And so I don't care where your position is on it. On now, what, what is your position that it, it is it is connected to midterms? Like, so explain, explain your ration behind that. Well, nothing unifies uh, the left like abortion. It's true. It's just, it's, it's one of the things that if they, and right now they're in shambles, they're, they're, they're getting hammered by the, by the right. They're, mm -hmm. the polls are showing they're going to get slaughtered. So it's conveniently coming up that, uh oh, abortion rights are going to get, um, you know, potentially get overturned by the Supreme Court. That's a great way to unify the left. So I think it's probably coming from that direction. Some people make the argument it's coming from the right, which I don't, I don't see what the rationale is there, but they try to make the case. Um, but I mean, of course it happened before. All this crazy stuff always happens right before, you know, months before elections. So now if, if, if the memo, if, if the memo, what hap, what the memo says happens and the Supreme Court does overturn Roe versus Wade, what that does is it leaves it back to the states. So the, the way the Constitution is supposed to work is it defines what the federal government can do. Anything that it doesn't specifically define, 
for the federal government can be left to the states. So right. the states then, unless the states, you know, infringe on a bill of rights, right? <clears throat> um, the states can do all kinds of. So if a state wants to have socialized medicine, they can have fully socialized medicine. If they want to ban cars, they can ban cars. I mean, they can do it, but the federal government is supposed to follow just the constitution. So that that's the rationale for that. So really what it would change is really nothing. Just, you, you would have, you would have to go in and get your state then to change the current policy for yeah, it to and, really and I, impact. And the truth is many states make it almost impossible to get an abortion. Some states have one clinic in the it's whole state. difficult in some states. Yeah. yeah so, but it's a, it's kind of like this wedge issue. Yeah. Um, I, you know, honestly, whether you, where you stand on that, it's really, what's crazy is it got leaked. Yeah. Who the hell is doing this? Supreme Malarkey. Court. You know, it's just, I don't know, man. It's just so frustrating because like around election season, you just see um, this this increase in, in tactics now to like really just throw a, a bomb in the mix to get more dissension, more division amongst everybody to, to, to really push them in a direction. Yeah, the bar it's keeps getting raised it, for it's, the it's yeah. becoming more and more effective than it ever has before, too. Yeah, they're finding new tactics I've never seen before. Well, yeah. you can you can you can move a large portion of people so much faster left or right than you ever could before. And so I think when you I think that the people that are behind this, right, that are doing these things have figured that out. And so I think it's it's only the beginning of this, of seeing more and more crazy well, shit. Again, the data analytics, like like human behavior, like they've mastered like human psychology dude, through all these algorithms. You, it's, it's pretty crazy. You don't want the Supreme Court to get hyper-political. You don't. You don't want that. That's the one branch of government that's not... And I know it's, of course, there's, there's it's political to an extent, right? But... You don't want it to be hyper political. You don't want Supreme Court justices to feel pressure or threatened before making their decisions. They're the ones that uphold liberty, and oftentimes it's unpopular. Now, forget this abortion case. This one, I guess you can, I've heard arguments for both sides, but they've ruled on things that were unpopular, and they did it because it, it, it preserved liberty. Now, years later, we look back and go, that was the right decision. But if they were like, if they followed popular vote, my gosh, we would be in a bad position. We would not be good. So that's the part that for me, that's a little, a little scary. Yeah, it's very alarming. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. Like it's, yeah, it again to, cause culture changes all the time and to have like a solid kind of like foundational um, system in place. Like we got to maintain that as much as possible. I, know, I would, you crazy. would think there would only be a handful of people that even have the ability to leak something. That's like what that. I'm trying. I think whoever did it, they need to be to the full extent of the law punished. That is a big deal. Yeah. And, and it's and I, a big deal. That's national I, security to some extent. Like, yeah. I think that, I feel like that's, that's so protected and, and so private that the, there can only be, to, you you can there's only got to be so many people on the list that even have the ability yeah. to leak that right you yeah. would think so it shouldn't be that hard to investigate and get to the bottom of how did this happen yeah but you know what's the problem is they'll find out after the damage has been done right after they get whatever they want politically or after whatever then they'll be like oh you know two years later we found out who did it and then yeah. who cares now but the bar keeps getting raised, man. It's really crazy. Yeah. Speaking of of this kind of stuff, regulation and stuff, uh, I read a study at Harvard that looked uh, looked at the effects. Okay, so have you guys ever seen you, you guys who's been to Europe? Have you been to Europe? Mm -hmm. You have, right? Have you ever been? Yeah. Okay. You ever seen what they have on their cigarette packs? The warning. I mean, I know what they're called in England. And no, not the names of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I know. That caught me by surprise too when I went. Yeah, to the UK. I'm like, what? <laughs> Guy was asking me to bum one of them, and I'm just like, "Excuse me, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you want to fight? Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, the, so are you talking about the warning on it? Yeah. So here we have a warning. Yeah. But in Europe, they have a picture. Yeah. On the cigarette of it's like a, messed up teeth yeah, yeah. or like someone dying from cancer to try to dissuade people from buying cigarettes, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, there's been talks about doing this on on sodas. So you'll buy a soda and there'll be a picture of like messed up teeth oh, yeah, or like, you know, like diabetes or yeah, whatever. Yes, yeah. And Harvard did a study and found that it actually worked, obviously. Nobody wants to buy a can. With <laughs> it's the, all repulsive. Messed up, <laughs> messed up ass teeth <laughs> on it or whatever. Uh, they said that it works, that, oh, it does work and it does dissuade people from buying, you know, sugary drinks. What do you guys think about some? I mean, we're, look, I'm a health person, so the less soda people drink, the better. But I don't know if I like forcing companies to do that. And I don't think it'll fix the problem. I think that people will just move to something else and 
Who knows? I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. It. Remember when they? We remember when they talked about the? Uh, did they ever enforce that? Remember we oh, the tax? On... No, no, where where you could put candy. Oh, remember right. they were trying oh, grocery yeah. store. Yeah, yeah, remember they were trying to say the, that they can't have uh, the, impulsive buying. Yeah, section. and they have it at the height for children. Like it's not even made for adults. You ever notice that you got to bend yeah. over to get chocolate? Yeah, no, like, it's, why literally, is it so low? it's literally yeah. for your two to you know six year old kid who's in line next to you. That's right in their eyeballs. It's not in yours. And so the idea that they weren't allowed to do that anymore, like I don't know if that ever passed or if some cities or states started doing it. Yeah, I don't it. know if anybody did that. You know but what? It's I, kind of like that to me, yeah. right? So it's kind of so like, am I really for that, against that? Do I really think that's effective? Do I, if it's one more thing that is just going to, you know, uh, you know, persuade you in, in a, a better decision health wise, I, I tend to be pro that. I yeah. mean, it's not, you're not is telling it them. Is it accidental that you're just stumbling across like sugar? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Like, Ooh, whoops. No, so I, there I, it is. I actually are you looking for it? I actually think there's a case for limiting or banning advertising to kids. I think that there's actually a case for that because they're not adults. When it comes to adults, though, I know that if you take soda away from people because of the ugly whatever pictures, mm -hmm. that the market and people will just find a way to get something else. So then what will happen is they'll be like, well, if it's 100% fruit juice, then it's okay, right? Yeah. Which is just amount of same. It'd be a whole new way to market around it. I yeah. think it'll just create another genre more than yeah. anything. That's probably what would really happen yeah. from it. I don't know. It, but if it, temporarily if it brings it's awareness. An interesting idea. Because there's you, you start you, doing it to beer. You can you know make I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you might sleep with this chick if you drink this beer, bro. <laughs> oh no. Real swamp thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh. Don't do that. Uh, cautionary tale. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever. I mean if it gets if it gets people who are completely oblivious to the potential negative effects of sugar and like them to go like is that really that could that can't happen can that and like question i don't go, even think it'll do that i think it just grosses yeah. you out nobody wants to drink imagine oh, you, like you i'm drinking a can or i'm drinking olipop right now which is is not bad for you but imagine if i if, if i bought this and there's this like picture of like gross ass tea i'm like well, i don't want to drink that yeah you know what i mean you think it's like that no i think it's more like what i, I think i think to deter people i mean like you said that i've seen those packets of cigarette but it's I think there's more. Look at that, dude! Look at the—it's a picture of like a like a, a toe that's that's diabetic. Ew. See, and to me, I feel like that. Could that really happen for me drinking these? Like, I just think it's gross. Nobody wants to hold that can <laughs> and drink that sh in yeah. public. I mean, you're not wrong either. With that. I, <laughs> I mean, saying. I don't know. I'm I'm a little conflicted. I I could see like it it's sort of deterring at least maybe like hey, impulsive hey, wise. It definitely flies right in the face of how drinks those types of drinks. Are advertised. They advertise like it's so cool. You yeah. Know? How cool are you with a fucking <laughs> yeah. nasty ass toe on the yeah, side your, of your, your mouth? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like it definitely flies well, right yeah. in the face of I like can't how they advertise. Skateboard real well without my foot. Yeah. yeah. They, when they start doing that to all foods, you know what I mean? You buy a bag of chips and it's like. Oh. I mean, it, it, the, those type of drinks though, they that they start. They're they're marketing to children right away. Yeah. I yeah. mean, on when you look at a TV, those commercials are geared towards. That's why I, I agree with that. Yep. I think if it's kids programming into kids, I agree with that. Well, Don't yeah, but where's the line there like what's what 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 18. okay so then what type of shows and what type of commercials are you talking about that's like 90 percent of what they already do yeah, i know yeah, i mean yeah. it's not it's not when you look at mountain have you ever watched like a mountain dew or a pepsi commercial today it's not uh, targeting you guys no no it's not yeah, all you know, guys don't even know you guys don't even know the hip-hop guys they're using no. like it's not for you it's for the 16 year <laughs> old 13 year old it's yeah probably one of them yes yeah. <laughs> So it's not for you anyways. Yeah. So they're they're already getting trying to get kids and they're using the cool factor. So it's it to me, this is kind of like the, you know, all right, you're gonna use the cool factor. We're gonna use We're gonna the, make it hella uncool. Yeah, we're gonna make it hella uncool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you think you're cool, your rapper that, that you like that drinks Mountain Dew, but you may you may have a toe that looks like this from it. Oh <laughs> shit. It would, I mean, I think it would work for soda, but I I don't think it would work for obesity. I think people would drink less soda oh, and yeah. move on to something don't else. Find a way it's not gonna else. change yeah, behaviors. That, you know, no. Yeah. Unless you put it on you know what you okay, here's you wanna know what would work? <laughs> put pictures like that on all foods. People just eat less. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every food has a gross picture. Oh, I don't want to eat this. <laughs> then you'll see it'll work. Otherwise, it ain't gonna work, dude. I mean, it, it brings it Except brings foods that don't come in. It brings a little bit more awareness around. I think that stuff that that has been solely marketed to us from early on is like it's just cool. It's all positive. Yeah, Pepsi yeah. and Mountain Dew for as long That's as why we, I think I might actually. I mean, a little experiment of it might be uh, interesting because you do all you see is positive, and yeah. people do need to know. 
like it's not all positive. If this, yeah, if this is a pattern that you're repeating all the time, a behavior that you you're owning, yeah. like there's consequences to that. I think that we've all lost sight of consequences. Yeah, no, I mean, like I, I remember when I was a kid, I went to Italy, and uh, you know, my uncle smoked or whatever, and I looked at the like, what the hell is on your cigarette? It's a picture of like teeth were rotting and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how well it's worked. Everybody still smokes yeah. in Europe. Yeah. Remember that smoke commercial where the person had like a hole in their oh, trachea yeah. Yeah, and they're like smoking and like blowing. I was like, oh my God, that one like freaked me out. You know yeah. what? <clears throat> the the anti-smoking, here's one of the few times where this type of regulations actually work. The anti-smoking campaign of making smoking look gross mm -hmm. was very effective. Very effective. It yeah. actually... Smoking. Well, you know, part of the reason why that because it is fucking gross. It is but <laughs> coming it from is. somebody who went through a phase of doing well, it. Listen, you know, fingers are smell like you shit. Stink. <laughs> yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. you know Clothes, what? Your skin. I everything. know we say that, but do you know how long cigarettes were considered cool? They yeah. smelled the yeah. same. Yeah. Doug's generation. Every movie had it. You know. The listen, Doug's generation. Smoking. You were cool if you smoked a cigarette. You had the cigarette. You were a cool guy with your freaking muscle car or whatever. Oh, I totally see Doug like rolled in his sleeve. Oh, oh yeah, man. with a leather jacket. <laughs> yes, dude. Yeah. Yeah. for sure. There's like there's a there's yeah, a photo out greaser. there. Yeah, there is. Close. There's a photo out there. Of Doug, Doug used to be in a biker game. Yeah. I don't know if you guys knew that. It was ten speed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it changed because all of a sudden it became gross. This is why kids use vapes now. <laughs> because oh, they're like, see, it doesn't I just smell. Saw, you, you see the anti vape uh, commercials that are yeah. coming out now, yeah. too. Yeah, I, just saw, I actually just saw one of those like last night. Your life before. up in smoke. Yeah, you know. <laughs> some stupid like no, that. No, dude, you're, if you, if you, you ever see the guys with those big ass vape things? They yeah. always have ponytails for some reason. They just, it looks like a, a Walkman. You know, like you're smoking a Walkman. Uh, it's weird. <laughs> like it's some weird, some weird. Uh, uh, the memes, device. the memes around that are yeah. hella good. I know. <laughs> Just chimney smoking it. Yeah. Hey, strange. I got to tell you something about uh, one of our sponsors. I did not know that they did some clinical trials on. So Caldera, okay. right? The, that's the face. My, one of my that. favorite sponsors. Listen. I never used anything on my face ever because my skin's just, it's just perfect natural. No, that's not why. Because I just don't do anything. Yeah. But then I use that Caldera. We talk about this all the time. It's like, it balances out my skin. It's really nice. So I use it all the time. And I had no idea that they have some clinical trials. I'm going to show you some of the stuff that they said. It, it, apparently, uh, it's just as good as we experienced for a lot of people. So they did I, some- I think, I, I think that's why it does so well. Remember, we've openly talked about like how surprised you guys were when you're like, when I told you first about the brand, like, hey, I really want to, I, I like it so much, I want to do it. And we're like, well, we'll see how the audience receives it. Yeah. The reason why it does so well is because everybody returns. So it's, it's clinically proven. This is a third party <laughs> clinical trial. So this is an actual study. It's clinically proven to work on normal, dry, and oily skin. So this is why Justin. And I can both use this. Yeah. We have very different skin. Well, both sides of the spectrum. But it's, it still works. Uh, so 96% of the people in the trial reported healthier looking skin, 91% smoother looking skin, 91% less dryness, 89% improved radiance and luminosity, 85% more even skin tone, 87% improve the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles. That's like, wow. that's nine, nine, almost nine out of 10 out of everybody of everybody in the trial yeah. noticed those positive things. So I noticed it right away. I yeah. mean, the minute, the minute I, the minute I put it on, I can see, see the difference. Yeah, you look that, beautiful. Well, yeah. <laughs> Anytime I'm in elevation, it's like a go-to. Oh, me. it's Cause I, do I dry out so fast. Yeah. Heading to Truckee Arena. It's like, man, I yeah. actually have left it at the houses up there just because of that. Because I'm like, I, I so many times I went up there and I forgot it and I was pissed. And then I was well, so my hands and my my fingers like crack and that's when it's like real bad for me. So I like, I'd just putting that on, even on my hands, not even on my face, dude, makes a humongous You ever difference. put on your beard? Uh, not, not as much. No. Oh, no, I like my beard. Yeah. Too. It was funny. Like, so when I was in, in Utah and I was at the uh, gymnastic event, one of the, I was like trying to get Everett. He was in the back. And I, so I was talking to like one of his teammates. I'm like, can you go get Everett for me? And so Everett comes back and he's like, his description of me was pretty hilarious. He's like, Oh, what? Yeah, because he told, he's like, I don't know. There's this guy asking for you ever. He's, you know, some buff guy with a tiny beard. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I'm so calling you that. Dude, I was tiny like, beard guy. Yeah, like, What's yeah. a tiny beard? I don't know. It was like a slight, you know, like I felt like, I don't oh, know why I find that so mean? funny. Tiny beard. <laughs> You know, I could grow a big beard I just, if I wanted to. I, <laughs> yeah. 
I'm like, I'll, I'm like ready to go ZZ Top after that comment, dude. Like it really got to me. It's stuck in my head. So funny to me. I'm so funny. Tiny beard, tiny beard in that picture. He starts with like the cop and then cuts me, cuts me to pieces. Just the TV. We've been doing, hey, we've been doing for some new nicknames, dude. Hey, that's gonna stick. That is so good to stick. That's gonna stick, dude. Oh man, your tiny beard from now on. Oh man, I'm so glad you shared that. You're a pirate. Tiny beard. Tiny beard. It's tiny beard. It makes me. You know what it makes me think? It makes me think. Like it's never gonna get longer. Like so. a tiny mustache and like a little like oh. what they call it here the flavor saver or whatever. Uh, yeah, like just a yeah, little you know, drips it. Yeah. Just a little beard. bit. That's so saver. funny. Yeah. Dude. You got good. You got good facial hair. Yeah, dude. And I, get, I like it lined up and everything. It's yeah. any, any longer, and I'm just not gonna get action. So that's where I'm at. Oh, <laughs> yeah, uh, wife nice. doesn't like it longer. Yeah, huh? yeah dude. She uh, doesn't like all that. Jessica like, likes my stuff. Jessica <laughs> likes mine a little longer, but I look old. I look like an old. I got too many grays, dude. I'm like, all right, I'm not ready. to Yeah, my grays are really starting to stick. You know, man, dude. I, I got to talk to Vic about it. Vic tries to tell me she likes it, but I'm like, my ha my hairstylist before, um, she just like, used to clip it out. So she used to- Your grace? Yeah. Where Vic's like, nah, leave it in. It looks good. And I'm like, oh, my. <laughs> yeah. You're adding like five, oh, five, 10 years I'm at least. I'm very seasoned these very days. You guys yeah. ever have a buddy that some dudes just, just so so Jessica, there's, a, there's genes in her family. I think it's from her dad's side because her dad's side <laughs> is Peruvian. They don't grow a lot of body hair. Now, if you're a girl- like Jessica's like a, she's like a dolphin. Like she's got no hair. Like she doesn't grow barely any hair on her arms and legs. And so for her, it's amazing. But if you're a guy, it's kind of yeah, weird, I right? I don't know why. I love that comparison. A dolphin? Because they're like smooth, you know? <laughs> I know. You I just hear the cackling so. immediately in my head. And I'm like, I don't know if that's a good analogy. So. What else would I say? <laughs> I don't know. Something yeah, really smooth yeah, and yeah, sexy. Yeah. You know? yeah. Dolphin? Dolphin skin. I don't think she's going to like that dolphins one. Dolphins are hot. Yeah. No, she, she's just not hair. <laughs> Oh, I tell you, my wife, not, to my wife's not having body hair. Yeah. We'll, we'll ask her how good you are describing yeah. her. <laughs> yeah, no, don't. Dude. I got in trouble once, dude. I don't tell you. I'm not just, even gonna say just it. once? Yeah. I, more than once. I'm not going to say it. But anyway, so uh, her brother can't really grow any facial hair at all. Oh, how None. Old, how old is he? Yeah. What do you mean? Oh, he's, um, he's my age or a little younger. Oh, he's younger. He's, oh. Yeah, he's a grown man. Oh, okay. He's always been baby. Because it took a long, it took a long, any... it took a long time for like my man beard to grow. Yeah. Like it wasn't that way when I was like uh, even in my early twenties, I couldn't grow like a full on. Yeah, you're relatively. Like my buddy, yeah. yeah, no, I'm not. I'm you're not, relatively hairless. Yeah, I'm not compared I'm not to dolphin. But I'm, I'm in like, the, I'm in the <laughs> not quite dolphin status. <laughs> yeah, I'm not but quite dolphin yeah. status. But <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm more like walrus. You know, you're the hairiest by no, just my arms, dude, right here. Literally, that's it. Beard. Uh, facial hair for men, for some, not everybody, t just takes time. It takes away. It took probably into my 30s before I like really could grow like a- 30s? Yeah, I'd say I was like, like wow. probably 30. I was probably 30 when my like beard really filled. For the longest time, I had like this, this stupid ass gap that drove me crazy. Where? So, between like where my goatee is at right now and like connecting. It wouldn't connect. Mm. And I couldn't connect like my mustache. I couldn't. Oh, I still don't. Yeah. Yeah, so right all that stuff wouldn't, You're wouldn't lot, lot, the, the big old chops in the yeah, like and the so then so you, I mean God, I mean combo. we go date ourselves like I mean I, I would rock the sideburns forever. God, I remember when that was oh, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. long sideburns, yeah, hell long ass sideburns. <laughs> but part of the reason was because I couldn't grow a full beard. I couldn't connect all the way down to my chin. You know what I'm saying? So oh. it was so probably I, thirty. I grew facial hair real young, uh, but then I stopped. So like out of my cousins, uh, I got you know right away I got hairy and all that stuff first, and so I thought it was cool. And then I paused, and then they just got monkey style. Like, they just got hairy, dude. And now I'm happy about that. I don't yeah. want the yeah, shoulder no. hair and the back hair. No, you don't want any of that. The, speaking yeah. of which, I, <laughs> I was with my with my son yesterday, my 18-month-old. We're outside playing, and it was hot. So I took my shirt off or whatever. And he's got this thing for <clears> – <throat> he's got this thing for boobs. So yeah. I'm just going to put it out there. Yeah. He doesn't breastfeed anymore, but he will find a way to – Pat on Jessica's boobs, or rub his face in there, or squeeze, and she's trying not to like shame him to make it feel weird. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we crack up because he'll be playing with her, and then you'll pause, and he'll like ta 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 ta, you know, and he'll like put his face on it and stuff like that. And all of us are cracking up. We're trying not to make him feel. When he's fifty years old. He's gonna still be doing that. He's like he's yeah, got this yeah. thing, dude. You know, and I'm like, wow, bro, we got to work on this because it's gonna become a thing. Oh, Keep Katrina going. has to. Katrina wears a sports bra at night because right, he comes in the bed a lot right now, especially with how sick he is, how often. <clears throat> so he's and, like this too. Yeah, because of that, because he she, he will in the middle of the night he'll find him, grab him, pull on him, you know, everything, and she's like, I can't sleep. She goes, so I, cause I was teasing her the other day. I was like, we were laying in bed. It was just her and I, he wasn't in bed yet, but he's, we knew he was sick and that he would probably end up in our bed. 
And I go slide my hands up or shoot. I'm like, what are you doing wearing a sports bra? <laughs> trying to cock block me right yeah. now? Uh, <laughs> that's she's like, no. She goes, I know my son's going to be in the bed later on. I just, instead of having to do it, she goes, I have to do it in the middle of the night all the time. So I just prevent, put it on early. Well, so I was out with him outside, took my shirt off and I'm holding him, right? <clears throat> so I'm kind of holding him like this. And he's yeah. like, and he looks down, you know, at my, at my chest. And I could tell he's trying to figure out like why it's hairy. Yeah. And... Then he's kind of like touching it a little bit and he's kind of got this confused look and I'm like trying not to crack up. <laughs> I'm watching him. And then he goes down with his head. It's different. He goes down with his head. I'm like, no, I'm not even going to wait to see what you're going to do, bro. I'm like, I pushed him. I'm like, don't do that. Just because like, don't make him feel weird. I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to wait to see what he's going to do on dad's chest. So Max, I don't want to traumatize him. So Max me. doesn't yeah. do that. But every time, I mean, I picked him up this morning. As soon as I got out of the shower, he woke up. He ran around the corner. He's in a good mood, was feeling better. And uh, he ran straight to me, and I picked him up. And like clockwork, always, if I have my shirt off, he automatically puts one hand on my nipple, and he's talking to me, and, <laughs> and he's he's playing with my nipple, like almost so almost subconsciously. Oh, like no, he's he's man. not looking down at it's even doing a- it; he's just doing it while I'm holding him, and we're talking or looking at other things. And one hand is always fondling my you gotta fucking wear pasties. chest. Yeah, yeah dude. <laughs> you gotta I mean, one of I, them. give him something to do. I, yeah. He's just done it forever, and so I've allowed. And if I if I lay in bed, if he's if we're all three in bed, and he come, if, which is rare, he comes to my side or he gets cuddled up. He's always next to his mom. But if he makes his way over me, and obviously I sleep naked, he's oh, for sure he's doing that. And that's part of why I can't sleep next to him because I can't. I can't sleep. Yeah, it'll irritate yeah. me all night long. I haven't felt him do that, but that's he does that. so funny you know. to me. Yeah, so I think it's very instinctual. Right? It is because mm. that's their like you know because you know she breastfed the baby, so he's like you know it's, there's got to be a comfort thing with of it. Of course, and that's why he, you get it even as a male. Now she like, told like, me he was going to come down to smell because that's what he does with her. He goes down and he, t- he goes. Like that, and I'm like, still, I'm not gonna let him do that. <laughs> it it smells different. Play, yeah, Speaking of, he'll be uh, surprised. He'll, oh, you know, <laughs> you don't smell like mom at all. Yeah. That's me, I was buddy. Gonna say, speaking of sports bras, because you brought that up, did you guys like get your your ladies uh, their their Mother's Day gifts? Yet? Oh, I, got I know. Like for, I mean, Viore is always an easy one for me, dude. I, I end up getting her like some leggings. They had ones with like um, this pocket for so she could put her phone in. Yeah. Have yeah. you seen their Halo? Is it Halo? We have a oh performance skirt. Have you seen this? Mm-mm. It's a workout skirt for women, so it looks amazing. Yeah, and then I, they have I this long that. sleeve feather tee. So like Jessica likes to wear, kind of baggy but not heavy, long sleeve like uh, not sweaters, but it's like a t shirt but long sleeve but comfortable. Mm-hmm. And she'll steal my shit all the time. So I'm always like, "Where's my shirt?" And I look at her. And I'm like, "Oh, thanks." This is very comfortable. And amazing. So that's something. That's I'm something so like guilty that, yeah. of not being the one that uh, buys her Viore stuff all the time. She buys it most of the time herself and and or Jerry does for me. So Mother's Day is already taken care of well, ahead of go. time. Yeah. Did you actually see, speaking of Viore though, did you see that they're now doing uh, gift cards? Digital. You can get on. You can oh, buy. Oh, well, it's even easier. Then she can pick up her own thing. Because, I, dude, guessing for me is. Yeah, but gift cards are. 50 50 dude they're they're well it uh, depends on who you're with like some people are there's some no people, thought in it I, yeah but i feel like there i i feel like there's like a 50 there, and i guarantee you're you right like, there's 50 percent of people listening right now like hell i would much rather my husband or whatever no, gives Jessica me like gift cards she yeah. wants me to like take my time and pick out now katrina likes me too because mm-hmm. i think she she appreciates my like i have style and mm-hmm. i can help pick out something really good so i think she likes that part of me mm-hmm. and so i do try and like when we go sh- I, I try and be the one to shop and pick things yeah. out for her. i don't with viore a lot of times there are partners i have jerry who just handles all that stuff so it's nice i don't have to deal with that so she's okay with that but she does like that but i know there is Half the audience, there's definitely women listening that are like, I would much <laughs> rather you have- get a gift card or just all the skirts that they have. On there. <laughs> I'd be guilty of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'd be yeah. my idea. <laughs> yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I'll ask Katrina. Actually, I've never asked her if like if she would be offended if I gave her a, a gift card for like her birthday. I know Jessica. I like doing. Stuff I know like- Jessica doesn't like it because whenever I say <clears throat> we should get a gift card for someone else, she's opposed. So like we're buying a gift for someone. I'm like, hey, you know, my mom or my dad, they like this place. It's him a gift card. She's like, there's no thought that goes into that. That's that's weak. You got to think about something. You got to be thoughtful. And she's a very good gift giver. I am not. I am like, a, I love giving gifts, but when I'm supposed to give a gift, uh, it's I feel like I just can't pick. So I'll just be like, money. Yeah. We know? give we give tons of gift cards because there's so many people in her family and we celebrate every freaking thing. So it's just like, dude, if we had, if I had to think 
about a creative gift for every single family, every cousin, nephew, kind of uncle, aunt, yeah. brother, sister-in-law. Like, oh yeah. my God, it would be so You, you want to know what's crazy with kids now is that they don't want cash. They want gift cards because they don't go shopping. They crypto. They, no. <laughs> yeah. Crypto.com. Yeah. Hey, hey. Just got tagged. Yeah, hey, my, my daughter, she's 12. She, has no, she knows she heard Bitcoin, right? She has no idea what it is. I can literally buy her a fake coin and write Bitcoin on it. I got you Bitcoin, honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's awesome. No, kids don't want cash. They want gift cards because they don't shop at the store. They shop online. Oh. Uh, so we uh, gave cash to a, to a kid for their birthday, and they were like, they told their mom, Mom, can I trade this in for, can you give me a gift card Oh, with that's this? interesting. They, because what do they do with the cash? They don't go to the store. They want to buy everything on, on the internet. How wild, right? Yeah, how is, have you if anyone followed yeah. up? I think I shared an article not that long ago about the malls and stuff like that. Is like shopping in person, like just continuing to plummet or because of the lockdown and then now people are going back out and people just wanting to be out? Or do you, are anyone following yeah, that market? I saw the retail going up, but I don't know if that's changed or like plateaued or, or whatever, but I, I definitely saw a little bit of So it is going up, but what I don't know, is it going up compared to what it was during the pandemic? Oh, yeah, yeah, pandemic or post right. So, I, I mean, I think that's what, what matters is like, is it is it going up in comparison to being dead and yeah. non-existent? Like that's not, that's not that impressive. Or is it going up relative to what it was pre-pandemic? That would be interesting to me to see if it's still if they're still i did see a poll though like when we had this discussion a while back about like going to the movie theaters and like, yeah speculating is that was totally gonna die because streaming services yeah, are yeah. Now bringing it and all what'd that, you see that uh the majority it was like it was a pretty high high majority percentage of people that preferred to go in person now uh to really? theaters yeah and like in i guess movie ticket sales have definitely increased yeah so i cannot I, relate to that at I, all. yeah but I, okay I, I definitely can i think that it it's uh i think eventually it's going to decline because of streaming and all that stuff i think still the main purchaser of tickets are uh moms and dads our generation we grew up with movie theaters you yeah. think so um, they're expensive think, do you think kids are going to go buy uh it's it's, it's, but it's uh, that's all relative where are kids no, going out not. on dates? yes it's all you, that it, was like movie movie way more expensive movie tickets for our generation was expensive to our parents generation they used yeah. to pay a dollar no no in, it was, no way it match it matches the cost of uh, yes it of does one it was one dollar for them it was ten dollars for us it's twenty dollars for them movie tickets were ten bucks when we were kids you say were when we were kids? Yes. Oh, they were like seven bucks, six bucks for matinees or special shit. We got the ten dollars pretty special quick, bro. Shit. <laughs> yes, dude. Special shit. Yeah, it was. It was Can not I watch the special movie. Yeah. Seven. Special okay, okay. You're arguing over like. Let's look at. You know what? Can we find this? The, yeah. The average movie ticket cost through the decades. Let's look that up and see because I feel like it's way more, bro. You go. It's, it's not gonna die though. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah, and There's I actually people like me and the. It, Dude, we didn't. I did not want to stay at my house for that long. Yes. I'm over it. Dude. Yeah. Well, my my, my point you. of arguing with you, Sal, was not that. It was is is more so that kids are the ones that are going. Like young, the young generation. Like if I was probably in high school still, that would be a place of socializing. Well, still you know for what me. they yeah, do totally. now. Like is, I'm a grumpy old man where I don't want to fucking hear someone chewing their food. Really? That's why I don't. Oh, go. I like going. To movies. Yeah, that's the reason I why I don't go. Yeah, I, if you I guys go, are homebodies, dude. Yeah. I, I, I get the fuck out. Well, yeah. so there's certain things though. So I I just I just text my best friends. Okay, that I want us to try and we'll see if we do to make it to see the top gun release yeah because that's a classic the new one looks sick they wait, they've Stupid. had that like filmed for a couple years now okay that's a okay. pretty that's a pretty straight line there sal yeah but we i, I wish we could see it in comparison to you inflation or whatever what is this? What? Because then you can see. Don't try to reframe matches. your argument. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Guy. It's pretty simple. If it was a dollar for our parents, it was ten for us, and it's twenty for the no, kids no, right no, now. No, no, it's no, pretty no. relative. No, because if you look at like the cost of higher education versus houses versus now you're going to argue semantics, bro. No, that's how you do the calc. That's how you Dude, do that. Dude, it's pretty. It's not as it would. The, do you think it's a deterrent? Whatever price point it is now for like. No, I'm younger? saying yeah, that that's because why. it's so expensive that it's fucking minimum I, wage I is ridiculous. Right, a kid who's tearing the line. Like, the kid who was in line everywhere. tearing the tickets to let you in, he Maybe. used to get paid four dollars. Now he's getting paid twenty Doug, bucks an hour. Doug, how much were yeah. tickets when you were when you were watching? Uh, what are they called? Talkies? Were they talkies when you were? <laughs> Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> that, those are good times <laughs> back then. It was a nickel. <laughs> Popcorn was fifteen cents. <laughs> He's like, there was a person. There was a guy that juggled before uh, no. Showtime. No, I'm mean, an organ player. Do you, yeah. Doug, do you remember? What's the, do you remember the cheapest movie ticket you ever yeah. paid for? I, you know, probably three dollars, but it was like a matinee type thing. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, no. but when uh, Star Wars was a big deal when that first came out, right? I was in fact the other day I was watching oh, uh, a thing on that, and there were lines. I don't see this anymore. Lines around the blocks from you don't really see that anymore, do you? Yeah, they yeah. do. Well, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For things oh, like yeah. Star Wars, all I mean, the, the Harry years, Potter, the like get hits. that. That bet you Top Gun will get that. Like no, the, oh, Top yeah. Gun's not Top gonna do it. Yes, it will. It's not. Yeah, all right, we'll play side bet right now. That movie's gonna suck. What? That movie's gonna suck. Tom Cruise, Listen, yeah, Rocky. Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise is great. Listen, dude. Hey, you know what just came out? Uh, Speaking of movies, you know what's on Netflix right now? Only on Netflix? What? The uh, Rambo: Last Blood. <laughs> so, <laughs> so hold on, it's called Last yeah, Blood. Yeah, dude. Hold on, that's the one right before Last Last Blood. Yeah, dude. no, no. Actually, okay. Uh, so all the Rambo sucked except for the first one. First Blood was actually a pretty damn good movie. It was a yeah. good movie, truly. Then they got weird. But this last one, obviously, come on, Rambo, Rambo resurrected, bro. Sylvester Stallone's in his seventies. The dude is jacked, and the premise—I only watched like the first thirty minutes. His niece goes to Mexico to find her dad, and then she gets kidnapped. Now I know what's going to happen. He's going to go down and kill everybody and kick everyone's ass. Yeah. So I'm pumped about it. So I can't <laughs> wait to finish watching the rest of this movie, dude. <laughs> I didn't even know that this is—is is this They're new? Still it's just those, yes. It's the last. It's it's last wow. blood. It's the last one. I mean, there's oh, no way he can make blood. another one, right? Yeah. What's he going to do after that? Bro, look how jacked he is, though, for We well, could age. do a zombie one. Is he right? 70? He's, how old is Sylvester Stallone? He's got to be... He's got to be He's over 70. 70. He's over yeah. 70. He's got to he? be, right? That's awesome. Yeah, he is. He's still kicking ass. Here. Drugs are amazing. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay, come on. The guy <laughs> 75. also... 75. Wow, 75, bro. Wow. You have Hell got... yeah, I want to be jacked in 75. You have got so to why. see... Chuck Norris is 82. Oh, no, yeah. he's not. Yeah, it says right there. Yeah, eighty-two. Whoa. Arnold is seventy-four. What does that Chuck look like right mind? now? Did you know? Did you know Chuck Norris doesn't have a chin under his beard? Just another fist. He's <laughs> stupid. <laughs> 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 so many Chuck you saw Norris that a meme memes, somewhere dude. for sure. Yeah. I missed the Chuck. Is Norris it, let's memes. see a current picture of Chuck. Yeah, I don't know. This might be as current as they get. That's not Chuck Norris. Well, according to this, it is. No, but it's not. That ball guy yeah, right there? Not, I don't know. That's not Texas. Well, total gym is still rocking. Dude. I love I've that show. Infomercials. Did you guys, okay, you, you guys watched the, the what was it, Return of the Dragon, where Bruce Lee fights Chuck Norris at the end? Yeah. Did you guys see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What sure a great fight scene, bro. Oh, yeah. What a great, that's where he like, it's so how weird there's nothing though, of him current, like, huh? I'm going to for that right now. Yeah, yeah. Or, I've, see I've he, seen like people dub over like different music to it, and it's just not. When, okay. he, when he grabs his chest yeah. hair and pulls it off. <laughs> yeah. I see this Karis whisper over it. It was awkward. I love it. it yeah, that was a great scene. It doesn't say, huh? Oh. It doesn't, but he looks pretty good for his age. Listen, he's in his 80s. Though. I know oh, Sylvester is. Stallone. Chuck's killing it, dude. I know Sylvester Stallone is on testosterone. Wow, he looks I know awesome. he's been taking growth hormone forever. Yeah. Fine, but the guy's been consistently training his ass off forever. Oh yeah, no, no disrespect. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. been working. The drugs hard. comment was just me but, being funny. I mean, I, I, like, so as I'm watching you, it, with, it's helped. As and I, I watching, I'll use all that shit when I get down there for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as long as I can afford all that stuff, I'll use yeah, all dude. that to keep. I mean, as long as it doesn't kill you. I was, I was watching it with, well, kind of watching with Jessica. She was on her phone because she's annoyed that I put Rambo on. But I'm like, babe, I'm like, he's 75. She's like, are you gonna look like that when you're 75? I hope so. Look how good Chuck yeah. looks at 81. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Interesting. But anyway, mm -hmm. I'll tell you guys about the movie. I know you're not going to watch it, so I'll tell you guys all about it. <laughs> yeah. after, I, okay. after yeah. I finish watching it. I mean, I'm really, I'm really curious, though, about the, going back to the movie theater argument, because I do think that, you know, this streaming stuff that we have going on is really, it's a big disruptor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's going to change the landscape. To Justin's point, uh, I think there will be, always be people that will want to go. I don't think it'll get. I don't think it'll ever go away. I think that well, it's it, a totally different experience. Yeah, and I, exactly. I think the era of the just the, the remember when we used to go to movies, it was just a theater, some yeah. popcorn. That's it. I think that's not going to exist. I think now you go. I was just. I just dropped my. my yeah, but okay. Off. So imagine this for a second. They have like good okay. food now. They have drinks. Well, some yeah, of them they, include. E e imagine foods. this. Yes. So like, think of this. What are some of the top things when you? Because you're the person I'm most curious about because you're you're different than we are in, the, in this argument. Like, what are the some of the top things that is unique to going to the movies versus watching it? Because. Um, it, you feed off of uh, everybody Other people. else. Right? Okay, so that's I knew you were going to say group that. flow. Okay, like, I knew you were going to say that. Like okay, <sighs> we're not far from you sitting down in your living room with, VR. You, with your VR. And okay, I hear your experience. That's not the same I, thing. Well, it's actually pretty cool. I experienced it with my best friend mm -hmm. watching an NBA basketball game courtside. And that's he's only because you don't like people 
I think it's <laughs> <laughs> no. When you I met movies. a couple dudes too. That I had random Hold strangers. You met dudes on your VR in the, in the virtual world. Yes, you. They, Is that how the, they sold you the glasses? Meet dudes. No, yes. on the stupid. internet. <laughs> Put on these VR glasses. Stupid. You know what I mean? Okay, so. Oh, that I knew Justin would go that way. That there is this kind of like, oh, it's like you're you are still with other people and the community feel and like yeah, but I they get, laugh in the theater. It enhances the laughter in, in the. Well, why do you like to go to sports events live? Well, I I do certain ones, not all of them. Okay, yeah, yeah. but so. but again, it's it, I guess it's just a different experience. Like I get really into like the surround music and you can obviously orchestrate this engineer it in your house. Like if you like created a, well, a that's theater why, room. Yeah. But look, but I'm like you, Justin, it's the draw. It's the anticipation. It's yeah, the driving it's to the brand theater. New, and it's like a lot of people don't know wh what to expect. And I like, yes, that. you're around real people. Oh my God, we're about to go into theater. You got your popcorn. You sit down. There's people around you. Everybody's, ex I get it. It's like a ritual. I yeah. yeah, I get it. I love the movies. I'm so I'm, I'm the same way. I totally get yeah, it. It sounds like a bunch of old guys. I don't that all that stuff's getting <laughs> Memories. disrupted. Memories. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. hold on. We sound like old guys because we want to go to movies. He doesn't sound like an old guy because he's angry at home. <laughs> no, I, I'm not. Okay, I don't like. I'm not anti movies. I haven't been in like three years. Part of that obviously is because of the pandemic, you know. So, yeah. but I and I plan to go back. I was sure as shit not going to sit in a movie theater with a fucking mask on. That's like that's oh yeah, real no, easy decision for me already. Well, I was in there when everybody's mad. I just you know, was, well, yeah. the lights are out. Yeah, come on. I've done worse things. Do? I've done worse things with the lights out in the movie theater. <laughs> than take my mask off. <laughs> Let's be honest. We've seen all the holes in the uh, popcorn. We've seen <laughs> <laughs> we know what you're up to, dude. <laughs> yeah, hey, baby, you got some popcorn? Yeah, dude. Like, I'll go, hey, such I'll, an old trick. I'll yeah, go with you guys and watch Top Gun 2. Even though that movie sucks, I'll go with you guys. It's not going to suck. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would, I, would go, I would go to the movies. I And, and more, more more, of my point is not that I think it, it, theaters will ever go away, but just I'm, I'm curious to like how they're going to recreate the things that people yeah. really like that and yeah. i do think that yeah. I, I don't think it'll be the same i think old guys like us will appreciate the experience the drive there other people think that's the hassle sound i know i know that you yeah. the things that you're saying are like oh the anticipation the weight the drive like uh, you younger generation going like what the fuck is yeah, he saying it. right now <laughs> that's all the shit i hate about going to the movies sure, right yeah. so you got to understand that it's going to get disrupted and it's going to look radically different in 10 or 15 years I from agree. now. I so I, my mind's more on like, I wonder how they're going to appeal though to somebody who kind of agrees more with Justin on like the, what are the things that he really loves about the experience of going there? And I think that they're, they're going to create that and this is what VR is going to do is you're going to be able to get that kind of vibe. It I won't mean, be the I, same. Well, I wouldn't have believed you until I started using <laughs> Oculus and really seeing the potential there. Like the, so where, early. Where they've already got. Like, it's so like, early. Whoa, this is... This is a totally immersive experience, so I could see them, yeah, getting close to that kind of feel anyway. Like what I try and when I think of VR right now and think about the potential that it has, I try and re remind myself of the first computer class I took in you know middle school, yeah. and the screens were fucking green. Yeah, and every, yeah. Oregon and the, Trail. Yeah, and, and that and yeah, Oregon Carmen Trail was like mind blowing cool or whatever yeah. like that. And to think where we are now, you died of dysentery. with computers, mm -hmm. and to think that we're at that level right now with VR. So yeah. just think about where that. I don't like to think about that because I feel like no one's <laughs> going to leave their house. We're all going to be just at home, plugged in, and that's it. We're I mean, done. I've I've been saying that's where we're going. We're going where half the people are going to just accept staying at home like ninety percent of the time, and just that's going to how way it's going to be. Yeah. So, but I mean, I figure the people that want to just do that and they don't want to be out. They're, I guess those are the people I don't want to hang out with, anyways. Yeah. So yeah. it's so less traffic for me. Mm. So It'd be a virtual zombie. <laughs> hey, real quick, if you eat a high protein diet you might be having some digestive issues, or maybe you just want to assimilate every amino acid so you can build bigger, stronger muscles. Well, one of the best ways to do this is to take high quality digestive enzymes. Now, there's a lot of companies out there that sell digestive enzymes, but only one company we choose to work with, Buy Optimizers, Masszymes, one of the best products I've ever used, really helps with my digestion. I assimilate more protein. I notice better recovery, less inflammation and better digestion. So it's specifically designed for people like you. Go check them out. Head over to mindpumppartners.com, look for buy optimizers, um, and use the code mindpump10 for 10% off your order. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Jack McInery. Uh, incredibly stubborn bicep tricep growth despite all other muscle groups improving. Should I target volume or intensity and are giant sets counterproductive or overworking? Look, all of those 
can help. But here's where a lot of people make mistakes when they're trying to bring up a lagging body part. Let's say I'm going to use an arbitrary number. I'm just going to make up a number. Let's say total amount of sets you do for the whole week for your whole body is 70. Let's say you do 70 sets of all the exercises for your whole body. And you've been training that way for a while. And then people are like, I want to bring up my glutes or I want to bring up my quads or I want to bring up my biceps and triceps. They just add sets on top of that. That's not the best strategy because not only, yes, it's important to add more potential volume or intensity for a particular body part or even change the workout for a particular body part. You typically also have to offset the total volume from the rest of the body because most of us train kind of in this optimal range if you're doing everything right and just throwing more volume on top sometimes takes the volume up too high mm -hmm. and then you actually don't benefit as much. So some of the best gains I ever saw in weak body parts was in increasing the volume on those body parts, but then also bringing it back on my stronger body parts to allow my body to have more resources and, and just less damage overall so it can focus on those lagging I mean, body we're, parts. I mean, we're obviously, we're totally speculating on this, but what do you yeah. think is, what's most common with someone like this? With, with someone who struggles to build their arms. Obviously, if you're not connecting with it, right? And you, you got somebody who understands volume and intensity, which already tells me that they're a more advanced lifter, right? So you're not, we're not talking to somebody who's never right. lifted before, right? So it's not somebody who like doesn't even know what to do exercise wise. Um, what, what would you say is most common uh, when you see somebody who struggles to put size on their arms right there? I, I mean, I don't know, full range of motion can be it, technique, uh -huh. uh, form. I think that maybe they're doing too much volume overall. Somebody that wants to bring up a lagging body part tends to do a lot of volume for lots of other things. What about a hard gainer well? in general? Just somebody who's actually like struggles on the nutritional side to eat yeah. and well, gets put enough size. I would say that. Calories. I would say that, but he says all of the mother group, uh, all other muscle groups are improving. So mm. if he's improving everywhere else except there, that's what makes me think back off on the volume on some other stuff. And then add it to these, you know, weaker body parts versus nothing is improving, but that I have this body part I want to bring up. Type of I deal. can see the fuller range of motion on some level. Just if you're in a sort of a pattern of doing the same types of exercises to try and isolate and you're not seeing any kind of growth improvement, yeah. you're not really giving it, you know, some kind of novel stimulus uh, to interrupt that or to even like reconnect with it. I think maybe you haven't spent enough time really getting that mind muscle connection to then be able to get uh, maximize that recruitment potential. I, I like that point too, because what he doesn't say or bring up in here too, and we've I th we did a video on YouTube a long time ago. It's one of the more viral one, old old viral ones that we did, where we talked about the elbow positioning when it comes to a bicep. Tri that was yeah, a big, exercise selection. That yeah. was like a big aha moment for me when in tr my training career is when I pieced that together, figured that out the the importance of manipulating that. I was I didn't I didn't even notice that I tended to do a lot of the the similar type exercises, even though they were different exercises because I was using a different tool, a rope, a triangle, right. a straight bar. But you're in like the same angle. With yeah, all same angle, same position. Yeah. I was stimulating the muscle the same way, even though I thought, <clears throat> because it was a different machine, yeah. a different handle, you know, I thought I was doing something really unique. It was like, but it really wasn't. It was very similar to the stuff I always do. And then simply by just making sure that, okay, every workout when I train my arms, I'm going to make sure I target from this elbow position from this elbow position and this elbow position. And now all of a sudden I saw huge gains. Yeah. In so to be more specific, it would be like a, a bicep or tricep exercise where the biceps are, are the elbows are by your body mm -hmm. in front of your body and then maybe overhead. Right. So different angle positions that yes. changes the stimulus. I can see that. The other thing I could see too, is that you'll almost never find a workout program where when you're training multiple body parts, where you do arms first, mm -hmm. it's usually chest, shoulders, triceps, right? Back, biceps or upper body and it always starts with chest or back and it goes to shoulders and then arms. Right. If everything's improving and it's the biceps and triceps that you're having issues bringing up. Put it in the forefront. There's nothing wrong with hitting your biceps before your back. Sure. Now for most people, that's not the case. For most people, <clears throat> you want to go back first. Mm -hmm. But, but if not, if somebody, you, not if you're saying everything else is improving. Yeah. yeah. hit the hit Because the muscle groups that you hit first tend to get the most strength gains and the most muscle gains. Studies will, will show this. So do that. Um, the other thing is Really good, full range of motion, slow control, focus on the muscle. We all know that. Um, and then he meant he mentioned volume, or this person mentioned volume and intensity. Didn't much, uh, mention frequency. In my experience, one of the most effective things to do to bring up a lagging body part is to train it more often. Not necessarily with more volume even, 
just more often. I've even taken clients with the same volume and split it up. So instead of hitting their, let's say their biceps twice a week for a total of, let's say, I don't know, 16 sets to do it three days a week and do five sets or six sets on each workout. So same volume, just more frequent. I around. agree with that. The, the only challenge with that is managing the intensity aspect because I think that- Yeah, you can't train super hard. Because like I, th- yeah. I mean, I remember as a young kid, like that was the first way I started to attack the arms. I was like, okay, I'm going to train arms like every time I come in. Yeah. But I was training it with this like crazy intensity every time. So I was constantly stuck in this recovery trap. Right? Mm-hmm. So you have to understand that I, I 100% agree that, you know, f- hitting it more frequently three, four times a week is totally fine if it's a, it's a stubborn, lagging body part. Hitting it first. Too. But, and hitting it first. But then you got to also understand that you can't hammer the shit out of it. You know, if you're doing it five days a week yeah. like that, you've got to back off. The hitting it first makes a big difference. Like, <clears throat> there was a point there where I, because my, my upper legs respond really well to exercise. One of the areas of my body that responds well. And I always would start with quads, right? So I would do my squats and whatever. And then I'd go to, you know, my other quad, and then I'd go hamstrings at the end. And at one point I really wanted to bring up my hamstrings. And all I did was hit my hamstrings first. Now, before that, I would just add volume to my hamstring work. But by the end of my workout, I'm more fatigued and, you know, it's a little more more challenging. Then I did a whole stint. I did like a whole eight-month period where I started my workout with hamstrings and then I moved on to the other exercise and I saw huge gains in my hamstrings. So that working that muscle group first I think uh, I think that's huge, I think that's yeah. great advice. I think that was I've done that multiple times with different muscle groups that I was thought was lagging in comparison to everything else. Totally, and I've always seen great improvement just yeah. simply by saying, "Hey, if this is as even like down to my calves, like which is like seems so ridiculous to start your workout, but for yeah, like who does that right? But like two years consistently, I did that. Two years consistently, was like every workout, very first thing I did was go over to the calves and did calves first. Yep. That was the best my calves ever looked was doing that. Now, the second part is about giant sets, which a giant set <clears throat> typically refers to three or more exercises strung together. So a superset is two. Giant set is typically three. So it would be like barbell curl, hammer curl, you know, preacher curl or something like that, right? Giant sets can be effective, but only as a novel stimulus. I've never really seen giant sets done long-term to be effective because it tends to be more endurance Mm -hmm. because now you're doing like three exercises or more together and it starts to become more endurance and strength focused. You get efficient at, yeah, doing a lot of reps. Yeah, but but if it's like totally novel and you're like, I'm going to do this for like three weeks, um, anytime you change your workouts that much, uh, you'll get like a really good, typically a good response in, in in a short period of time. But I don't see it being a long term approach. The the problem that I would have with the giant sets is also with taking the advice of like increasing the frequencies. That's an area where you have to be careful. If you're going to increase the frequency of training the arms, and then you yeah. also are doing giant sets, like the likelihood that you're probably over training yeah, or over applying intensity is probably there. So choose one or the other and test that, and then tease it out. Next question is from Britt Spears Loves Shoes Collection. Mm. Whoa, that's like <laughs> your fan base right here. Adam? Britney What's Spears happening? and Shoe Collect. This they they <laughs> wanted to get picked for Adam. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Does the effectiveness of changing phases for hypertrophy say anything about the truth? Behind muscle confusion, you know, does the effect? Let me what the effect. So the fact that you change phases for growth, does that say anything about the fact that muscle confusion? That there's truth behind it. Well, that's where it comes from originally. Yeah, the the, the problem is the muscle confusion part is it changes up every workout. Like they're they're always changing the exercises. Like there's, uh, it, it, it. my problem is it doesn't really allow you to get super good uh, at, and efficient at a lot of the lifts is when you're changing all the time. Yeah, the the worst myths in the, well, anywhere, actually, in any space, but definitely in the health and fitness space, the worst myths have some truth in them. Yeah. So they start with some truth, and then they go crazy, and then- They get bastardized. That's what happens. It yeah. was it, muscle conf- The idea of muscle confusion of, originally- uh, the it theoretically it's it's correct. It's, yeah, it's right. like don't do the same exact thing yes. all the time forever. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. So, but it, it got bastardized and then it turned into this thing where it's just like you know now people are we're pre, we were preaching and I'm by the way guilty of being one of these people that was you know preaching like we got to confuse the muscle every workout. So yeah. it's like you're doing something different to you're just shake an eight ball and then hey, yeah, the workout. Yeah, yeah, thinking that that's a, a great approach to growth and it's so. So quickly, it, yeah, but yeah, it, I 100% think that's where where this came from is exactly that. That it does you. There's a tremendous benefit from you f- sticking to a phase for a short period of time, 
after you've ran that phase for a short period of time, i.e. three to five weeks or so, then you move into another phase and yeah. that's what promotes building muscle. Now, it's some there's a lot of exercises that you don't really gain the max value of that exercise until you've done it for a while and gotten good at it. These t tend to be the complex movements like mm -hmm. deadlifts and squats. You, when you first do them, you get stronger fast just because you get used to the movement, but really the gains start to happen when you start to get good at the exercise, which means you have to practice you them. You have to practice them a lot. Often, right? So you want to do core lifts and you want to do them often and you want to do them long term. What you change up are the reps or the tempo. So I'm still squatting, but I'm squatting now with a slower tempo or my reps are going up a little bit or I'm throwing in, you know, like a superset type of deal. Other exercises like single joint exercises, you can switch up a lot faster. Like I switch up bicep and tricep exercises all the time. But there's core things that I don't switch up very often. I tend to do an overhead press almost every time I do shoulders, right? I tend to do some kind of a row for back or, you know, something along those lines. So changing things up is important, but what you don't want to do is think that you, that, that is, that's it. And I just change up all the time because then you never get good at anything and you never derive the real benefit. You all, you all, you're always in this phase of like trying to learn something, in right. which case you don't really get the, the maximum. Well, it weight. also depends on, I think, your goal though, right? Because- I think if you are, because some one of the things I do remember about m that phase of my life when I was going through this muscle confusion, right? Of like, where I used to pride myself on saying like, no workout ever looked the same, you know. Yeah. So uh, I was very fit, right? So I, I had great rotational strength. I had good mobility. I you was, also had a lot of experience. Yeah, I had stand, yeah, I had a lot of stuff going for me. <laughs> what I wasn't doing was really progressing very much. Oh. I wasn't building a lot more muscle. I wasn't getting way stronger. I was just staying really fit because I was doing a lot of different things all the time. Good and, condition, relative yes, strength. Yes. I was like, you know, if, it, if we, we always talk about the, uh, like building an avatar in a video game and you yeah. know, I just had a, a like in the middle. Yeah. I was in the middle of all everything. Really good. You know, yeah. pretty good at everything like that. And it kept me overall fit. So there is, there's some value to that. If you've, if you're it, where you want to talk, if, obviously we get questions of people that are trying to make gains, improve, yeah. change, body fat composition if you're trying to make progress and moves this is where this stuff really starts to matter because that's what's going the things that you're talking about are what's going to make the body change in a direction at a faster more efficient yep. rate where if there's somebody who has reached this place of you know a, a, attained a look or their fitness that they want to be at and they want to just kind of maintain that fit physique i think Tr training that way isn't as bad as sometimes well, we make I, it I sound. Think, yeah, I think that's why we all lean on like uh, the actual strength uh, coaching type of uh, programming because it, it's the law of specificity is still there. Like in terms of like how your body's going to adapt in a specific direction based on the stimulus you're providing. Uh, so you you can only get good at something the more you know frequently you practice it. However. Um, you know, the body adapts. And so what we try to do is sort of, you know, interrupt that process. But if you still want to get good at that very specific goal, you bring it right back. So it's yeah. like, it's, it's still heavy in the rotation, but knowing, you know, where the body tends to kind of drift off and plateau, yeah. like if we can stay ahead of that. Now we can keep progressing. Yeah. And some people will point to like advanced bodybuilders and be like, oh my God, they do a different workout every single time. Well, when you're really advanced, you, and you've been working out for a long time, you can connect and do exercises pretty well the first or second time, depending on the exercise, right? But bodybuilders have been working out for a long time. They can go to any chest machine, any back machine, lots of shoulder machines or exercises, and they can feel it and get a good workout. When you're not advanced, there's the learning. You have to go and learn the lift. And also complex lifts aren't like that. I've taken bodybuilders with lots of experience who never deadlift, had them deadlift, and it's like a five week process of getting them good at it before oh, we start to like, add weight. It's longer and, than that. Yeah. You, you know, if you want an example, this is such a bad jab right here, but I just just came across my feet, so that's the only reason why I'm bringing oh, it up. <laughs> <laughs> here comes the shit. Yeah, it was not, and it's not meant to be for that, but it's, it's such a great example of what you're talking about right now. Is and you brought it up. Remember, you said, "Does it feel like the bodybuilding space is deadlifting, squatting way more since we started talking about it five years ago?" With that, uh, and I told what's his it, name, the, uh, Mr. Classic Olympia. What's his name? Yeah. Seba yeah, Jeremy Bodia. Oh, oh no, Jerry. Uh, he started deadlifting, huh? Yeah, he's dead. He's I been deadlifting for a while now. But when you watch him, it's rough. It's it's a rough, it's rough form. He never dude. deadlifted. Really he, no, before, he never. Yeah. And that's the thing. He never deadlifts like that. You see him squatting barefoot now. You see him trying to deadlift and stuff like that. 
Uh, it takes a while. It does. You know, especially when you haven't ha you haven't done it in a long time. It's and even for someone that advanced, yeah. who has that great mind. Now you put him on back and chest machines, and he'll, oh, he'll hit bro. it right away. No, and it's not yeah. to take anything from the guy when it comes to sculpting and physique and and how impressive all the other things that he can do. But it's such a great example of someone who's that experienced in lifting. The, and how complex yeah. a deadlift or a squat can be that that person is, animal. he's arguably one of the best connected people to his muscles than more people than, than the 99.9% you know, .9 of the population yet still taking that dude years. Okay. Cause he's now, it's, I've been watching him now for like the last year or two that he's been consistently doing it and it still ain't pretty. Yeah. So it takes a while to practice that. That's to, true. And so in, in other words, he still is not even reaching the max benefits from that deadlift. And when he gets really good at that, that movement, he's going to start to, and I already see his back changing from the, the progression of him starting yeah. to do that already. No, I was referring to, what's his name? Seabum. He's, uh, oh, he always deadlifts. That's squat. what I'm saying. I, th I feel like he's got a like, beautiful deadlift. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. I think lifters that's like, he's been doing it forever. He has. And I think lifter like lifters like him are making other people in the space. Now sure. To, Cause yeah. Yeah. For, for a I second, was trying to highlight the example you were saying of like the, the learning curve. Oh no, no. He, that. yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about somebody who's super advanced. No, he's my, really good deadlifting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Next question is from Kamui X. Is it okay to train to failure if I'm only focusing on a muscle group once a week, for example, arm day? You know, failure training is very interesting, and I, mm. I tend to recommend most people avoid it, but I will say this. In a short period of time, it can produce some pretty fast muscle gains, but you got to program it properly, and nobody programs failure training properly. Everybody throws it in into the workouts on a regular basis, the results from failure training fade real quick and you hit this fatigue from it. I'll tell you what, I can do nine sets for back with good intensity and it doesn't fry me like one all out set to failure. And I know this because I've been experimenting with failure training and programming with failure training and I've come, I'm coming to some interesting conclusions, but for the average lifter, for the most part, avoiding it's probably a good idea. Well, but you know why that is? Because they're, there's so many variables that come into play when you push the push to that limit. Yes, because you're you're pushing those outer boundaries that it could have some extra benefits, mm -hmm. but it also requires a lot of other things have to be in place. Like for example, like if uh if my sleep is really off or my diet is really off and then I then I fucking failure train that workout, the likelihood that I'm going to reap the, the max benefits from that failure training because of those little variables is very minimal. But I could go into the gym and just slightly progressively overload my body or challenge myself yeah. a little bit, but and not and go and leave two in the tank and progress my body still, even mm -hmm. on not the most optimal sleep and maybe not the most optimal diet. It, re it, it requires a more dialed in person. Not to mention there's probably the genetic variants of some people's bodies that can just handle being punished yeah. like that and other people that are very sensitive to that. So I think why this is such a debated thing or this a hot topic because there's so many and why we lean so much in the opposite direction of why? Because you can build the most amazing physique, the most competitive physique, and never train to failure. I will make that argument. Well, the studies long. compare it side to side and they show that. Yes. They show that it does no So if you can and, but, do it but, without it and you're risking more by playing with it, it's like, mm. I will say, though, if you program it right, it can be very Agreed. interesting. Just I well, use it. That's it. the thing is you can see great result initially. And I think that what it what it does is it draws people that are are most likely to abuse it uh, because mm. they're, you, they get excited by the initial results. They think that this is like, you know, it's, a, it's applied for mental discipline. It's applied for their sports training. It's like most like hard work at work, like all that, sa that same button they've been hitting for everything. And then it works initially, but now it's not working for them, but maybe I got to go harder. So it's just, I just see it. It's like, such a great point. It, it just goes in that. It attracts, it does attract probably the wrong person. Of course. It, do, it doesn't attract the, the person that I was saying, who's got everything all balanced yeah. and it's got great sleep, great diet, like not a lot of stress. And they like manage all that. And no. then they, and then 
That person, okay, which ironically, you know, that's the yogi type person yeah. who avoids training they that should way. Probably train to failure they should probably time. train to failure. They should probably train to failure in their life more often and would reap some massive benefits from it because they do such a good job of managing all the other rest of the stresses stresses in their life that adding that into their training routine would probably benefit them big time when it comes to muscle. But it attracts the person that you're talking right. about, the caffeine junkie, not sleeping very much, run it, burning the candle at both ends, and when I hit the workout, fucking crush yeah. too. Crushing yeah. everything. Yeah, it, yes. people, the, people really underestimate how much it taxes the body. I'm telling you, one set of real failure, okay? When I say real failure, like... I have to drop, I have to put the bar down on the safeties, okay? Of real failure squats, one set will hammer me more than a nine set decent intensity leg workout or, or even 12 set. Yeah. It takes me way less time. I'm done in 15 minutes, but I am fried. And I know because I've had Doug experiment because I'm, I'm, I'm figuring out some programming with this and stay tuned. But even Doug will tell me his 15 minute failure workout. And he's like, dude, my legs are, I, I'm like exhausted. So it, it taxes the body in a very interesting way. Here's the other thing it does. It's more ripe for injury. It just is. Like when you go fatigued, your form goes out the window. If you don't have like perfect technique and you fail, uh, the risk of injury starts to get really high. So Much you, higher. Yeah. So you really got to be smart with this kind of training. So and all I know, those- I know. And I'm, I know I'm like pushing against it. I use it. Okay. So I'm not somebody who's not like, I just think that- and we, we don't know who this person is, right? So I'm not, oh. it's, it's, it, this is also hard. Like if I, if I knew who I'm looking at and who I'm talking to and I know kind of their background, how they've been lifting, where they're at in their journey, the advice changes, right? Sure. Like I definitely, depending on who I'm talking to, I might be like, Hey, you know what? Yeah. Let's start to play with a little bit of failure training. You've been, we've got all these other things we've dialed in really well. Let's start play, dabbling with this a little bit and let's see what kind of response you get. And then let me hear your feedback. Like, I absolutely would would do that with clients, but I also had control of that. I knew who I'm talking to. When I'm talking to the general population and knowing the the kid I was who would probably be listening to this podcast and stuff coming into weight training, I, I'd be better off listening to someone who's telling me like, you don't need to train to I got failure. better results when I stopped training to failure. So did I. Straight up. So and did again, I. It's, it's because the programming is really tricky with failure. Now I'm starting to really realize, but, and I tell you what, failure is a lot further than you think. Like you do a set of, like I said, squats to failure. You think you're about to fail and you're, and you're like, oh, I got another rep. And then you're mm -hmm. like, oh shit, I got another rep. And I got to, it's, it is nasty. It is grueling. Yeah. But it to hammers the body. To your point too, that really hard to keep your core and everything really tight while you, bro, you, you have know, your to legs focus so much on your form and technique when you go to failure yeah. way more than if you don't. And I'm, I know what I'm doing. So the, you get the average person going to failure and it's, it just goes out the window. Next question is from XDMW08. Is bodybuilding healthy? <laughs> yeah. No. Competitive bodybuilding? No. <laughs> no. Bodybuilding from, a, yeah. well, bodybuilding from an exercise perspective and diet from a, you know, if you exercise a bodybuilding style, connect to the exercises. Training feel for the hypertrophy muscles. is a different conversation. Yeah. Feel the muscles. If you eat, you know, high protein and you stay relatively lean, like that kind of bodybuilding lifestyle, very healthy. Well, there's longevity. There's a difference, there's a difference between saying uh, training like a, a, a bodybuilder or training like an athlete, then, or like saying those are two separate things, or then training, they're saying like, uh, then bodybuilding as the sport or playing a sport. Yeah. Playing a sport. And uh, doing bodybuilding are not healthy. So no, no sport is healthy for the body. Yeah. No bodybuilding is healthy clear. for the body. Training like an athlete sometimes is very healthy yeah, for you. Sure. Training like a bodybuilder is very healthy yeah, for you point. sometimes. So th that context matters here. And so how this question is being framed, like is bodybuilding healthy? I'm assuming they're asking like the sport, like the sport of it. Just like very it's, unhealthy. It's like pull bodybuilding out yeah. and say, is soccer healthy for you? And it's not. You know, no. is football healthy for you? It's yeah. not. So it's the same thing when it comes mm -hmm. to that. But is training uh, athletically? To have skills like a soccer player or like, yes, at times that could be extremely healthy for mm -hmm. you. So the same thing works here with bodybuilding, but the actual sport of bodybuilding, and I know some people like to argue it's not or whatever. Okay. The the actual event of bodybuilding. Yeah, like, like training like that, you know, pre-contest diet. On yeah. There's, stage, there, they, like there's a reason why they call us walking dead men when we get on there, yeah. because you push your body to such an extreme uh, with with a, with depriving yourself of calorie and nutrients and water and fucking with sodium and you know and that low of a body fat percentage that is not healthy. It's not healthy to keep that. So how can a sport be? How can that thing be healthy if 
uh, the place that you get rewarded for is not a healthy place to no, stay. No, but, <laughs> so, if, but yeah. if you live the lifestyle where you're like, yeah, I like to go to the gym and I like to train for hypertrophy and feel the muscles and totally different. get a good pump and do multiple angles and different exercise. And I like to eat five meals a day and high protein. And, you know, I keep myself relatively lean. I like to look sculpted. That's longevity, man. That's a longevity approach when it comes to strength training. Low risk of injury because you're focused on bodybuilding rather than how much weight you can lift. There's definitely longevity in that. The diet part is amazing. Competitive bodybuilding, one of the most unhealthy sports. Uh, let's let's be real. Like yeah. you're forcing your body yeah. to build as much muscle as possible by every any means necessary, including you know anabolics and all that stuff. Then you starve yourself and you get on stage. It's just and they die. They die early. We're we're seeing this all the time. So. Yeah, like some of the disciplines that go into it, I think you can turn that into healthy practices, yeah. um, especially the awareness around like how food affects your body, how you can optimize recovery, yep. um, what you can do to really you know move the needle in terms of muscle uh, development and really connecting and being able to flex and have control over your body. So, I mean, there's there's elements of it in there that I think that you can learn that uh, you can apply for longevity. But in terms of the actual overall uh, bodybuilding, it's just not healthy. Just like sports. Just, yeah. like, just like you can say, you can pull from your experience in football and talk all, d all day long about how much that has enhanced your life and mm -hmm. made you a healthier, better version of yourself. So absolutely, there are aspects of the sport of football. There are aspects of the sport of bodybuilding that can be very hard. I mean, I, it's crazy. Every now and then I do get a question where someone asks me, like, do you regret, you know, bodybuilding? Oh my God, I don't regret it. It was, it was an amazing experience doing it. It taught me so much about myself. It's made me a better coach. It's made me a better communicator around nutrition and the and physiology. Like mm -hmm. there's so many things that I, I learned. And even, even being that late, I was late into my fitness career starting into bodybuilding and I still learned a tremendous amount uh, by going through it. So I think there's a, a lot of great positive things about it. So I'm not shaming it, but it's not the support of it. Is, yeah, is I, I, the majority of my, I mean, a lot of my training in, in nutrition was borrowed from bodybuilding uh, principles uh, personally. And I've got great, you know, and it feels great. But no, I wouldn't compete or do anything like that. That's just uh, that's just nasty. Probably the I, I would have to say the most unhealthy sport. It's very dysfunctional. If yeah. I had to guess, you yeah. try to keep doing it. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal, and again, they're all free. You can also find us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam, and you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. 